Marianne Saliba, welcome. So you're down at the southern edge of this so-called Greater Sydney lockdown area. You probably have never considered yourself part, part, part of Greater Sydney, so it's a bit of a misnomer calling this the Greater Sydney lockdown. How are you feeling about this announcement yesterday? Well, very disappointed, to be honest with you, Joe. Um, there seems to be double standard by the New South Wales government. I mean, Gladys at her press conference yesterday said, look, if figures improve, um, we'll consider letting local government areas out of the lockdown. I don't know how they can pr improve any more than zero. We started this lockdown with zero. We've had no cases, no traces, no venues. We still have none. And I don't know what the Premier wants from us. Is it minus one? We, but, we can't... But, Marianne, looking on the New South Wales website just now at the exposure spots, there's one just around the sh uh, corner from you at DAPTO there. Uh, so DAPTO's nine miles away or something like that. Um, the thing is that um, DAPTO is in the city of Wollongong, not in the city of Shell right. Harbour. And we can still have restrictions. Nobody's saying open up the floodgates and let everybody in or out. But the people of Shell Harbour should have a right to be able to move around their community freely when there is no transmissions. Yeah, and so what what kind of middle ground would you like to see the Premier strike? Well, I'd like to see a let us out of lockdown and put those restrictions in place, the similar restrictions to the rest of New South Wales. If you live in, in a red zone and you can work from home, work from home. Um, you know, ensure that you're doing, you're following all the procedures about physical distancing, personal hygiene, you know, um, wearing face masks. I think that that's appropriate when we go into, into public spaces. But uh, this whole lockdown, the, the people of Shell Harbour are scratching their heads and saying why. Only uh, on Monday, I think it was, that uh, um, Orange, Cabon and Blaney were let out of the lockdown after they had active cases in their community. They were only in lockdown for two weeks, and yet here we have Shell Harbour. We're in our fifth week with four more weeks to go. It is just not fair for the people of Shell Harbour, and this is what I'm talking about, the double standards. So what are the restrictions in place there now that you would like to see lifted? Well, one of the concerns that families have raised with me is that people are working from home and they're having their children at home for homeschooling. Some of those parents can't work effectively while they're trying to deal with and support their children through their schooling. And the Premier was very vague about whether children whose parents are working from home and can't manage, whether those children should go to school. That's one of the problems. You know, the, the fact that people are losing money every day in Shell Harbour from loss of wages, loss of income through their small businesses, it is, it's just not right. And Marianne Sliver, what are some of the examples you've heard down there in the Shell Harbour area about businesses being affected by this? Well, businesses are very badly affected when you think about... Um, they don't even know whether they're supposed to be open or not. I, I received a, a call from a florist and saying, am I an essential business? And I said, well, as long as people are having funerals... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> funerals and weddings then they will require they will require flowers so you know it's the interpretation of these rules that are being put in place that are very vague and very watery and of course now we're having the construction uh, business now reopening but we've got concreters and we've got electricians and plumbers and others that have all been locked down for long for long periods of time and losing wages during that time because of these inconsistent decisions and have you been in touch with the Premier's office yourself? Uh, yes, I have. Well, I've written to the Premier on two occasions and uh, I have received no response. Yeah. And how do you feel about that? <clears throat> Excuse me, you get a frog in the throat at the, at the wrong time. Look, I feel, I, feel really, I feel really bad for the people of Shell Harbour because the Premier owes us at least uh, the, the reasons why we are in lockdown. Uh, there has been, I asked why, I just wanted the facts. I want the facts and figures so that we can, you know, feel satisfied that we're doing our bit. But in actual fact, I feel like the people of Shell Harbour are being set up like a buffer to protect the people of the South Coast. And that's really unfair to, to put us into the hot zone for no apparent reason. What about the financial support that's available? 
Well, the financial support really isn't adequate for people where you've got uh, two people that are both working, um, have a family, paying a mortgage, buying their food. It is just not adequate to support those families. Yeah. Okay, Marianne Saliba, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Shell Harbour. Thank you.